Hey guys, this is Chris Davis. Right in the house. I'm Zach. Hey guys, it's Nolan. George Dennison here. Hi, I'm Chris Guthridge. This is Carlos. Hey everybody, Nick here. And these are your picks for the top 10 games of 2013. All right, just barely squeaking in at number 10 is the wonderful 101. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm surprised it's even on this list. And it's not because it's not a great game. It's a really great game. But I know a lot of you out there don't have Wii U's. And I know even fewer of those people probably picked up the wonderful 101. But if anything, I think that's a testament to just how crazy the wonderful 101 is and how fun it was to watch. Everything in this universe is insane. The characters are hilarious and over the top, but the situations they're, that they're thrown into are even crazier. Everything is at 11, and, and just when you think shit can't get crazier, it does, and it gets, it just blows the previous crazy situation out of the water, and you're like, oh my god, I'm in space, what is happening? And there was literally people in chat just screaming in all caps like, oh my god, jaws on the floor, like this entire time, the, the entire time I was playing this game. But... Uh, it's not just a fun game to watch. This is a legitimately quality game that I think lives up to Kamiya's previous action games like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta. It's just as deep. But what I like about the Wonderful 101 is while it plays as well as those game and as games and as tight as those games, I feel like there's a more puzzle-like element to the combat where in something like Bayonetta, you kind of you choose the sword or the whip or something. You, you, you find a weapon that you just kind of like to use, and you learn some combos with it, and you can pretty much just stick with it. But that doesn't work in the Wonderful 101. You legitimately kind of have to figure out what weapon in your arsenal is best for any given situation. Otherwise, you're just going to fail, and you're going to fail horribly. But it makes it so much more satisfying when, you know, for example, like if I whip, use the whip on this enemy, and I whip him when he's doing this very specific type of attack, I can knock him out of it. I can't do that with any other weapon. I've just figured out how to solve this this situation that was giving me so much hell before. And that is what is kind of satisfying about the combat scenarios in the Wonderful 101. It, it's like a puzzle. So you combine just the quality tight gameplay with just the crazy spectacle of the Wonder, f Wonderful 101, and it's really no surprise that it's here on this top 10 list. You guys chose Metro Last Light as your number 9 pick, and I'm very glad that you thought it deserved to be on this list. Developer 4A Games built upon the foundation that was Metro 2033 and assembled a masterful reworking of what was previously a great, if somewhat janky, experience. The human AI was completely rewritten to take advantage of a new three-stage stealth system a la Metal Gear Solid 2. We were introduced to new fiendish mutants that made their homes deep within the abandoned tunnels. We got to see more of the remains of Moscow as the nuclear winter finally begins to thaw. Considering the outlandish working conditions and the very small budget they had to work with, 4A putting out a game on par with Metro 2033 would have been an accomplishment, but the release of Last Light in its current state is a remarkable feat. I honestly could go on and on about how much I love Metro Last Light, but we have other games to get to. I'll say this though, it's a damn good game that no post-apocalyptic fiction fan should miss. On that note, PlayStation Plus members in the month of February 2014 will receive a free copy of Metro Last Light on their PS3s, so you have no excuse not to give this game a shot. The Stanley Parable isn't so much a game as it is a metafictional free will simulator. I greatly enjoyed this experience, not for any real gameplay reasons, but for the higher ideas behind them. The multiple endings each muse on a variety of themes from individuality to the nature of free will and choice, and explore how each of these themes relate to video games. In fact, this whole game feels like a culmination of all those moments, those weird gray areas where a game's narrative and its gameplay seem to be at odds with one another. 
This is used to highlight the unique condition video games have as a storytelling medium, where a story's narrative is shaped by the choices of its audience. Indeed, the Stanley Parable, at times, seems more like a thesis paper than a game, but it still comes out as one of the most enjoyable and charming experiences of 2013. You win! Congratulations! The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Not only the direct sequel to one of the most beloved Zelda games in history, but a game that innovates and captivates in true Nintendo fashion. It almost single-handedly justifies the existence of the 3DS thanks to its flawless control scheme, beautiful 3D effects, and a near-perfect blend of retro and modern game design philosophies. It's no wonder so many members of our community voted the game onto this list. Those of you who have been around for a while may remember my first playthrough of A Link to the Past and should understand why I never really considered it among my favorite Zelda games. With that said, I had a far more entertaining experience and less stressful experience with the sequel. It's a game I wish I could have featured on my own personal top 10, but it didn't quite make the cut. What can I say? 2013 was a fucking amazing year. Anyways, back on topic. A Link Between Worlds was quite honestly a masterpiece. It was a bit too easy for some folks thanks to its ultra-responsive controls, but there's no denying how fun the experience was. I'm blown away by how easily Nintendo made a world that had already been explored feel both familiar and new at the same time. The dungeons were brilliantly designed, and thanks to the new wall merging mechanic, puzzles had to be approached in a whole new way. Of course, it would also be a crime to not mention the superb soundtrack. In the end, I was a little put off by the poorly balanced item rental system, it was nice to tackle the dungeons in any order that I wanted, but being able to farm for rupees and then buy all the items up front made the game a bit of a breeze. With that said, that's hardly a deal breaker. A Link Between Worlds is a shining example of how Zelda should be handled on the 3DS going forward. Now that this game has taken off, I really can't wait to see if Nintendo creates a completely original Zelda adventure on this platform using this formula as a launching point. Good choice, guys. Okay. Let me rap at you a minute about Saints Row 4. Saints Row 4 stands on the razor's edge between imagination and reality. Saints Row 4 is a desk pop and show stop and fudge top and jaw drop and quest for glory that'll blow people's minds. You want superpowers? Got it. You want awesome missions? You got it. You want crazy, ridiculous fun? Got it. You want an updated graphics engine? We got a dubstep gun and I'm like, what? Yeah. Hey! Did you know there are a ton of activities in this game? And basically, all of them are fun. How many other games can say that? And, Nolan North is in it. Playing Nolan North, and it is hilarious. If you don't pick his voice, you and I aren't friends anymore. God, this is such a fun game. Embrace the crazy, fun trumps all. Saints Row 4 is a perfect choice for this year's Game of the Year list. Glory to our Stotska! It appears that Papers, Please is the community's fifth favourite game of 2013. I think it's cool that this game has had such a good reception and found a place in people's hearts, because at its core, Papers, Please is both a great game and a really hard sell. It's effectively a job simulator that's simulating a very dull job, checking people's papers. And you know what? Without the excellent writing that is interwoven with the game's mechanics, it probably would be a boring experience. But it's the game's story and the difficult decisions it forces you to make that make the game so absorbing and set it apart as one of the games of the year. Actually, when you really stop and think about it, a game like Papers, Please taking the number 5 spot or being on this list at all is pretty crazy. A lot of other choices on this list are big budget AAA action orientated titles and there are plenty of other indie games released this year that were more colourful, less depressing and ultimately more fun than Papers, Please that could have found their way on here. Yet Papers, Please is in the community's top 5. Well, I'm glad you all liked it as much as I did. Oh, one last thing about this game, Georgie Rocks. Best video game character of 2013, end of story. Assassin's Creed 4, we meet again. After years of Assassin's Creed building a dedicated but divisive fanbase, it's great to see the community give it some love. If you watch my top 10 video, you know that I hold Assassin's Creed 4 in the highest regards. It's a game that takes the best the series has to offer and layers it on top of one of the most satisfying pirate sims, no, one of the best open world games ever made, in my opinion at least. I also won't skip another opportunity to applaud Ubisoft for the rather meta direction that they took the present day sequences. 
It came out of left field and honestly, it felt very refreshing to me. It was also just plain clever and it didn't hurt that they jammed it full of easter eggs. Of course, being an Assassin's Creed game, it has a few problems. As we've said many times before, Ubisoft has historically opted to iterate rather than refine their systems from game to game. For some, the unpredictable climbing mechanic and contextual design framework is the kiss of death. For me, it's never really stopped me from enjoying the hell out of the franchise. In this case, sailing the open ocean and exploring the lush and perilous islands throughout the Caribbean is the definition of addicting. I personally spent 60 plus hours in the campaign and almost never felt like fast travel was pre preferable to taking in everything the world had to offer. In the end, the world was beautiful, combat was visceral and fun, whaling was fun, hunting and collecting secrets was fun, steering the and upgrading my ship was fun, and you better believe that blowing up other ships with my sweet broadside cannons was really fucking fun. Unfortunately, following dudes without being seen is still not very fun. Oh well, everything else was fantastic, and I couldn't be happier and more enthusiastic about the direction of the series is headed. Some may not share my optimism, but enough of you out there in the 4-player community did, so for that, I'm happy. Okay, so Bioshock Infinite, sort of a polarizing game to be honest. I know it's loved by many and disliked oh, by quite a few. Uh, I'm one of those. I personally think the game is a little bland, boring, and all the uh, story elements that a lot of people have been praising are pretty much just Donnie Darko fan fiction. You know, I'm talking about fan fiction stuff that people write that's usually about Mario and Sonic having sex. Um, but, you know, putting that aside, doesn't matter. The game, you know, had uh, some pretty good hype and uh, it was very well received by plenty of people. Although, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised that. Uh, whatever little I hear about it now, it's um, mostly criticism and critique. Find the to take you know, this thing it's no longer now. people. People kind of stop being wild by it. You know, almost almost a year later, which you know, kind of says more about the game than I could say. This short clip. All right, Grand Theft Auto Five is the number two pick of the community. And while it wasn't on my top 10 list, I'm glad it made it onto this list because I did want to say some things about this game. If I had a top 20, it'd probably be on that list. And that's because of all the Grand Theft Auto games I've played, this is the first one that feels really fun to play, mechanically speaking. And what I mean by that is, I can run up to a dude and sucker punch him, and it actually feels satisfying. Melee guys never felt fun in the previous games. Same goes with shooting, which finally, you know, feels competent, which is to say a lot for a Rockstar game, and the driving, which has been just tuned in such a way that I feel like I can weave in and out of traffic um, without too much stress now. I especially loved driving over hills and stuff up north, just just the physics of that was really satisfying. And some of the, the gameplay additions that they made with the specific characters, like Franklin's ability to slow down time while driving, was just a really, really smart choice and making the game just fun to play. But the other thing that's really great about Grand Theft Auto V is the, the story and the setting and the characters, um, specifically Trevor, who's probably the greatest Grand Theft Auto character I've ever seen. And it might have something to do with, with Trevor being the perfect fit for solving that problem that Grand Theft Auto has always had, where the characters in the story are super serious and they're not trying to kill everyone, but then when you get to, you know, playing the game, you're running over pedestrians on the street. That made sense for Trevor, and that's why he was the perfect fit to do that, or Rampage Mission, for example. But he was also really funny, as were a lot of the characters in the game. It was just expertly written and incredibly just entertaining to listen to people interact with each other. And if I really had anything negative to say about the game, uh, it'd be that maybe the, the heist missions weren't as driven by systems as I was hoping, and they felt, felt a little scripted and shallow, and honestly, there probably wasn't enough of, of them. That and the story had lots of weird moments of downtime where I spent way too much time hiding cars or working in the docks, and just some uneven stuff like that. Honestly, because this game was so fun to play, if if they had an editor where they kind of removed some of the fluff that kind of really drags down that game, it probably would have definitely made my top ten list. It was just a really, really fun experience. Naughty Dog really knocked it out of the park when it comes to The Last of Us. 
which is why I'm not surprised it's on most people's top 10 list. It has everything anyone could want in a game. There's a great story, there's great action, there's suspense, there's thrilling moments, there's great character development, there's shocking revelations throughout the game. I can't stress enough how much this game means to me. That intense moment when there's a bunch of clickers and zombies all around you and you're low on ammo and you don't have anything to throw and you don't know what to do and you just, you know, you sneak past someone and you pick up a brick and you smash a zombie in the face and you find some ammo and you shoot one and you run out of there. I mean, oh, it's just so intense, this game, just running for your life. It really feels like you're running for your life. And besides making a great game, the multiplayer is phenomenal. I love playing with community members. It was, you know, so much fun. I still play with them. I still plan on playing with them. Uh, the multiplayer really captures the essence of the game well. That, you know, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. You're constantly talking to your teammates. You know, I don't have anything. I need ammo. I'm out of ammo. What do I do? You know, do I craft a shiv or do I craft a health kit because I'm low on health? Should I use this, you know, the health kit crafting materials for to make a Molotov or do I try and make a health so I can punch a guy to death or try and flame him. It's just so intense and so much fun, especially when you play with your friends. It gets a little frustrating when you're playing with strangers who don't have microphones and there's no communication with each other, which is why I really suggest playing with friends. I mean, get with a four-player community. We get together and play this all the time. You're welcome to join us. And we'll have a fantastic time playing this game. The Last of Us is an awesome game. Alright guys, that's about it. This video marks the end of our Game of the Year coverage for 2013. And I want to thank everyone for watching this very long project. I also want to apologize for the length of time it's taken to get this final video out, as we ran into several obstacles that slowed us down significantly. That being said, thank you all for watching, and please stay tuned as we head deeper into 2014.